Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for this opportunity to show what we are working at Chalmers uh, in Sweden. And this is maybe not directly related to quality assurance, but we hope it's a step towards that. And uh, okay, at Chalmers, we have uh, uh, been developing a system for treating uh, um, neck tumors. We have a working prototype right now. Uh, and it's a wideband system working in the 300 to 800 megahertz. Uh, but our aim is now to develop uh, a helmet applicator for treatment of the brain tumors, uh, especially in childhood, uh, for childhood brain cancer. Um, we know that childhood uh, brain cancer is the second most common type of cancer in children. And the conventional, conventional treatments are, uh, have a good uh, clinical outcome, but they have uh, severe late side effects. Uh, so there is room for hyperthermia uh, in lowering the dose, toxic dose of radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Uh, so, and there are also some uh, initial promising results from the literature, um, but it's definitely a challenging site to heat uh, because of the sensitive tissues we have there and uh, highly conductive also uh, for the cerebral spinal fluid and other tissues that are present that absorb most of the power. Um, this is uh, the antenna we have at Chalmers. It's a wideband antenna, bow tie. It is a bro uh, broadband antenna. And we, um, we try to develop a helmet applicator. And in this sense, we believe that the classical ring-shaped applicators are not, uh, no longer sufficient uh, for treating tumors in this area. And we would like to increase the degrees of freedom in design. So for instance, we would have uh, different antenna arrangements around the head, as you can see here. And uh, apart from that, or in addition to that, we would like to develop uh, multi-frequency treatments uh, for using two or more simultaneous operating frequencies. Uh, and also com combine different uh, sizes of antennas. So we have a bigger antenna working at 300 megahertz, for instance, and a smaller one. Uh, around 500, 450. Uh, but of course, if we want to optimize, get the optimal configuration, this is a very expensive, computationally expensive task. Uh, so we need a method to quickly evaluate many configurations, many antenna configurations, uh, and pick up the best. In this sense, we developed uh, a method for determining the an approximated field distribution due to an antenna at any location. Uh, our method consists in uh, simulating uh, many antenna locations around 70, around the head, um, as you can see here. And uh, subsequently, if you, if you wish to have the field distribution due to an antenna at any location, any arbitrary location, then you do a, an interpolation using this triangular patch. So the fields here are transformed and moved to the query location um, and then uh, summed up, uh, weighted sum up. And this works for any combination of frequencies. So you can, have, uh, you can evaluate many, operate many combinations of frequencies and many antenna types uh, very quickly uh, and you can use this method in an optimizer. And we validated this method by comparing uh, this approximation with a full simulation. Uh, so we, if, we if we sweep the position of the antenna in these points, for instance, so there is, uh, they are in between a triangular patch of the simulated locations, and then we check the difference between uh, the full simulation and this approximation, and then we see that this is up, up to at most 25%, which is uh, acceptable for our task. Uh, and this is valid for all the frequencies uh, we're working on. Uh, including more uh, up to 800, not included here, but... Uh, and uh, I have to specify that this is valid for our antennas because these are low coupling antennas. They exhibit low coupling, so when you, when you put together these antennas, uh, you can ignore or, or like neglect the coupling effect. <coughs> so this is a, a video of the optimizer. So this uh, optimizer will explore start from an initial guess, for instance, eight antennas uh, on a ring, and this, uh, the optimizer will explore many locations and optimize uh, 
Um, in this case, we would like to target this uh, medulloblastoma child. Uh, it's a child model with medulloblastoma. The tumor is quite large, and it's also close to the surface here. And you can see that the optimizer is moving the antennas towards towards the volume uh, target volume. Um, and this is possible because of this fast approximation. So this uh, this whole optimization optimization takes uh, more or less one day. Um, but this is just an example, and we see that starting from an initial guess of eight antennas in a ring, the the changes are are there, but not so relevant, I would say. Uh, these antennas are moved towards the, as expected, they are moved towards the tumor, uh, but there are some other antennas on the other side to give coverage of uh, the other side, and the SAF, uh, SAR amplification factor, is improved. Uh, however, the HTQ is more or less the same, so we think that this is not sufficient, and we are probably stuck in a local optimum uh, of this kind of optimization. So the next step is to define an assembly procedure. So we start uh, to get closer to this global optimum um, of how the antennas should be located. So we start by putting only one antenna and then optimize it, and then add in a second antenna, optimize them together, a third antenna, and so on, as you can see here in the video for free antennas. Um, so these free antennas are... Uh, presumably closer to the global optimum. Uh, and then we did this for a different combination of antennas. And when you see the results here, they are quite different from the ring-shaped uh, ring applicator. So in this case, we see that only two or few antennas are close to the tumor are necessary for the major part of the heating. And this part instead is more like uh, covering from the other side and uh, avoiding hotspots uh, through destructive interference. <coughs> we did some uh, some tests with different combinations of frequencies and antennas. Uh, these are preliminary results, uh, and this is a plot under um, according to the number of antennas. So if we pick one antenna and we put it in the optimal position, this is the HTQ that we get, and then we add a second antenna and optimize it, and this is the improvement in HTQ that we get. So we can see that already at six around six antennas are necessary to reach the plateau. So after that, more antennas you add, uh, if they are already in the optimal location, then the further antennas you add, this, this will just, uh, this will not contribute much to the HTQ. Um, this is a bigger antenna at 300 megahertz, uh, HTQ 2.9 for this kind of tumor. This is the best we got so far. Um, this is uh, just an example of combination, uh, 300, two types of antennas at 300, 450 megahertz and 300, 500 megahertz. Results here are similar, but that's because uh, we don't optimize really for the frequency now. These are just uh, guessed for the preliminary study. Um, so, to conclude, um, we could through this study, we could uh, understand that we can improve the HTQ by 1, 1 1.5, 1.3 points just by rearranging the antennas around the head. Uh, and also that once, once these antennas are in the optimal position, few of them are necessary to reach this optimal HTQ. Um, furthermore, uh, as you've seen from the frequency combinations, uh, the results here are... Uh, uh, not extraordinary because we haven't been optimizing for the frequency yet and probably uh, this is something my colleague Morteza will work on um, on uh, using a treatment planning based on a particle swarm so that we can include uh, different kind of frequencies and uh, which hopefully which comp will complement each other in the hotspot generation and the average out. Um, so the benefits are not highlighted right now by this study but uh, this is definitely a step towards our design of a uh, helmet uh, for treating child, uh, child tumor. With this, I guess I thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Very nice and interesting work, Maximiliano. Thank you. Are there any question? Yeah. Uh, 
as I have seen, the tumor in your example is a little bit peripherally located, and so you need only four antennas. Would you uh, agree that possibly you need a larger number of antennas if the tumor is uh, centrally located and made you some simulations for other locations as well? Yes. Uh, so the idea with this uh, study is to design a, a helmet which is patient specific. So uh, we believe that in order to reach uh, a decent level of HTQ and the target uh, coverage, you need a, a design which is specific to a certain location. So uh, as you highlighted, it's correct. So this particular result we have in this model, it's kind of shifted towards the surface. So antennas are expected to move towards the, the tumor location. If they are if the tumor location is more central, uh, then in that case probably the optimizer will look for more uniformly distributed antennas to cover from all the sites. So it is correct. So one question for me, do you think that you... Where? Ah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So do you think to, to, to do the same optimization that you are doing here for every patient specific and does it seem feasible to do it before the treatment in a short time? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, that's an, another uh, that's the further step. Ne uh, next step would be to design a, uh, may pro potentially some helmets that are for a certain location. Uh, of course, it's you cannot have a helmet for every different kind of every patient, but you have you can have a helmet for a certain kind of location and size. So that's uh, that's our current aim to develop to understand how we can treat a certain kind of tumor and then possibly develop another kind of applicator for a different kind of tumor. Thank you. So, yeah. What would it take to uh, use this in adults? Use? Use this in adults. Yeah, it, it can definitely be extended to adults. Um, this is a model child with medulloblastoma model that we got from the, from the hospital uh, in um, Salgrenska Hospital at Chalmers uh, in uh, Gothenburg, uh, but of course it can be extended this method to any kind of antenna and any kind of model. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we need to move.